Exactly. She's not. <laughs> Damn YouTube! Damn. YouTube gets me every time! <laughs> but it's very emotional uh, getting to come here because I, I'm, I sincerely mean it. And you know that. We've talked many times. And, um, there's a... One of those times in my life I was hanging out over at AJ's when he was living in Nashville. And we were over there and we had written many songs and stuff together. So it's kind of like, you know, I got over the, the gig and now we're buds now. I'm like, man, it's great. Yeah. You know? We're sitting around, I'm playing guitar and stuff, and he's playing on his piano. And stuff. He goes, hey, man, do me a favor. Grab that guitar over there. Try that one. So I right, put my guitar in there. So I start jamming them out, jamming out, we're writing the stuff, and we wrote the song. I think it's called Dust and Bones, is the song we wrote. Um, I was like, man, this is a great guitar. This is beautiful. And he said nonchalantly, and he goes, yeah, that was my dad's guitar. <laughs> and I know it was yours, but it's the other one. Excuse me, excuse me. What? <laughs> See, that's my dad's broke by and starts saying off something. Like, I, you might not want to be letting me hold this. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is kind of sentimental stuff. Yeah. And I remember I was so gooed out, I was like so touched, you know, I, was, I really honestly was. And I got home and I was, my friend D. Scott, who y'all met, who's playing with Skyler, but one of my close friends, he also works with me at my record label. Actually, he does all the hard work and I get to say I own the record label and he runs it. And, uh, I said, these Scott, you're not gonna believe what happened to me today, man. I've got to tell you, I said, uh, you know, I told him the story, I said, there's no way that, that AJ is ever gonna know how much that, that means to me. There's no way that he's ever gonna know, you know, that that, that, that I, and he goes, Bo, I'm almost positive he, he knows exactly what that means. <laughs> and I said, man, this is just like the coolest fucking moment in my life. <laughs> and um, so little things like that, when you get to hang, around with your heroes and people that you've admired so much growing up. And you do, you learn so many lessons from them over the years. Um, there's, a, there's a true gratitude that comes along with the love of this, this individual's music. Because I love Jim Croce, and I love his music. But Ingrid, I have to say something, and you're probably going to be very proud. Oh, sweet. I cannot think of anyone who has kept such a unique legacy, true, uh, relevant, and genuine, as you have. In this place in the Disney world, this is Jim Croce's place. Thank you for, for a fan. Thank you. Now this cat, I knew him growing up. I didn't, but my granddaddy used to buy moonshine from it. <laughs> yeah. oh, I better on I say, for he too much to believe. The boy I got a mix of that cigarettes, rolled up in his t-shirts, and he got a tattoo on his arm. I said, baby, he got another one to just say, hey. And in a sunny afternoon, he is a dirt track thing, and a 57 Chevrolet. He got a tattoo on his arm, so baby, he got another one to say, hey. Sunday afternoon, he is a dirt track demon and a 57 Chevrolet. Oh, I saw blue that racing fool, he don't know what it feels about. He do 130 miles an hour, smiling like a camera with a toothpick and a knife. Say it now, but he got lovers on a long way. I'm a 
something and still look for the dead jack demon in a 57 Chevrolet. All you are here is screaming for the dead jack demon in a 57 Chevrolet.